this is my Bernie story. Mm. Uh, my name is Suzanne Gunta. I am 52 years old and I am an expat American who's lived in Germany since 2007. Um, it's hard to know where to start. So uh, when I was 20 years old, I was nominated by a close family friend to be the vice president of the Shawnee County Young Democrats in Topeka, Kansas. She nominated me because she thought that I had conviction and my family was closely tied to politics in Topeka, Kansas, the state capital of Kansas. And so she thought I would be a good fit. And I had never thought about any type of political um, uh, work of any kind. Um, but I accepted and was nominated and became the vice president. Well, at the time, I was a little naive and I thought that Democrats all kind of had the same beliefs as me and they wanted to fight for what was right for the people. Well, <laughs> I lasted a few months. Uh, my, I became quite cynical when I saw that most of the people around me uh, were involved for personal gain and um, just wanted to move up the ladder. So fast forward many, many years um, to when I'm 34 years old. 34 years old, um, I had uh, been working for a company in New York City, a very well-known food market. And through that company, I had insurance, medical insurance, and uh, not a lot of concerns regarding my health. Um, I later on um, lost the job and moved down to Florida to live with my brother and sister-in-law until I could find a new job and get back on my feet. Um, I had been working for many years as a professional chef and um, insurance was something that kind of came and went, mostly went. I, I don't remember other than the job in New York really having good health insurance coverage. And I just always hoped that I was going to stay healthy. Well, so it's uh, the year 2001, early 2001, and I'm living in Florida. And I had COBRA insurance. Um, and I was paying about 500 a month to maintain... The, the health insurance, and I didn't have steady work. I worked as a courier for a little while, um, but that was uh, not steady. I certainly couldn't afford $500 a month, and um, I was getting help from my father at the age of 34 to maintain this health insurance. One of the reasons at this point I wanted to is because uh, when I was 19 years old, my mother had died of cancer, and so I still at the age of 46 and so I still had some fears about my health and thought that insurance would be a good thing to have. <laughs> well, <clears throat> uh, I started uh, feeling tired a lot. Uh, I kind of wrote it off to stress, but I had some other symptoms that concerned me. So I went to a doctor while I still had insurance. I thought I had endometriosis or possibly ovarian cancer and I wanted to get tested. Um, he told me I was ridiculous for thinking that, that I was too young and didn't want to do the C125 blood test for ovarian cancer and sent me on my merry way telling me that I was fine, that I had a functioning cyst, that was it, oh, get out of here. Well. Eight months later, I was back in Kansas and working for my younger brother at his restaurant that he owned as his um, baker and deli manager. Um, 
and still didn't have insurance. I had dropped the insurance after the doctor had told me I was fine. I was like, okay, I'm just being paranoid. So eight months later, I realized something was still very wrong and went to the emergency room, like most people with no insurance did. And um, they found two growths, one the size of an orange, one the size of a grapefruit. And yes, it, uh, the doctor um, said, okay, I did the C125, see you later. Um, my father found out that I was at the emergency room and I told him what they had found um, as far as the gross and he said don't move and my father who's a medical malpractice attorney um, drove straight to the hospital he was there in about 10 minutes flat and he marched me back into the doctor's office demanded to see the doctor and said if this was your daughter what would you do and the doctor at that point um, looking scared, he knew who my dad was, um, said I would immediately take her to Kansas City to the Cancer Center to Dr. Julia Chapman, who was a surgical oncologist. Immediately. Go now. Make an appointment. Now, had my father not done what he did, I would not have gotten that advice. Another thing I find really sad, um, it's because I didn't have insurance, so he didn't he didn't tell me that. So um, a few days later, I found out uh, that I had tested um, positive on the C one twenty five um, for cancer, and um, then uh, the doctor scheduled surgery for me. Um, take into account that uh, the first time I went to the emergency room was I think uh, oh no a week previously or something um, so a week and a half later I'm having surgery to um, remove the tumors and to test to see what they were because it still might have been a false positive Turned out um, I ended up having a full um, hysterectomy and I had stage 3B ovarian cancer with a 25% chance of living three years and no insurance. Fortunately, KU Medical Center was a teaching hospital and um, <clears throat> so they worked with patients sometimes. Uh, my father and I made a deal to make payments to cover my my treatment, my surgery, and my treatment. But the bills ended up being uh, around a quarter of a million dollars. I couldn't, there was no way I could have paid them off in my lifetime. And because they, but because they were a teaching hospital, they wrote off my medical bills. But I'm like one of the very, very fortunate people. This doesn't happen very often. Um, so that was in 2001. I was 34 years old. Um, between that time and the time I moved to Germany in 2007, I no longer was able to get insurance of any kind because I had a pre-existing condition. So I moved to Germany in 2007 um, and ended up uh, getting married to a German man and went to get insured here. But before that, before I was on, actually on the public system, I had to have an emergency surgery to um, clear my intestines um, because I had had adhesions from my hysterectomy in 2001. And I wasn't insured yet, so I was terrified to get the bill. But the bill came, and for the surgery and nearly a week's stay, the bill was about... 2,500 euros. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe the difference in cost of care here in Germany compared to the United States. <clears throat> when I did finally get on the insurance plan, the public option essentially here in Germany, 
they asked me my name and my date of birth. And I said, don't you need to know about my past medical history? And they said, no, it doesn't matter. It has no bearing. And my chin <laughs> hit the floor. And uh, I was in a state of shock, I think really happy shock to finally be insured. And insurance here covers um, nearly everything, but uh, not dental, partial dental, and um, some eye care, but not the glasses themselves. Uh, currently, I pay through taxes when I get my paycheck about 300 a month. No copays, no deductibles. When I get a prescription, it's usually around five euros each time. I take thyroxine. I have an underactive thyroid now. I've had um, a lot of doctor's visits uh, due to that. Um, I've had a couple of hospital stays, all completely covered, no bills, broken a foot, broken a shoulder, um, had reconstructive surgery on my shoulder, all covered, no bills. I can't imagine what it hap what would have happened if that had happened to me in the United States. Um, so, meanwhile, since moving to Germany, really since I was 20, I'd been really disconnected from the political process in the United States. Um, I was cynical, didn't believe that there was going to be a presidential candidate that was really gonna get me off my butt to vote from abroad. <laughs> my life is here in Germany now, mostly, although I still have lots of friends and family in the United States that I was constantly, um, sad and worried about, um, that they didn't have health care, um, that their um, quality of life was nothing like what I have here in Germany now. And then Bernie Sanders came on the political scene. And I woke wide awake. And I saw for the first time since I was 20, a candidate that represented everything that I had always believed should be or could be. And the main thing was Medicare for all. Um, I don't know how many times I've cried watching him talk. Um, I started phone banking for Bernie Sanders. I signed up to give 27 dollars every month and I still do. I texted for him this time around and plan to start phone banking again and uh, I'm really hoping that eventually, oh one important thing, um, healthcare here in Germany is sort of like Medicare for all who want it and the private insurers and the system there has really undercut the public option. Um, and it's completely unnecessary. Um, if everybody was on the public option or the equivalent of Medicare for all, then it would be a lot better funded and any problems there might be within the system would be non-existent. So this Medicare for all who want it it's just a way for the private insurance companies to keep their foot in the door and to find ways to make the system work for them and not for the public option, which doesn't bring them money. So don't believe it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's basically my Bernie story. Um, I live in Germany now. Maybe I'll go back to the States, I don't know. But at this point, my quality of life and my health care and everything else will keep me here. Um, if I decide to quit my job tomorrow, I'll still be covered. If I decide to quit my job tomorrow, I'll have unemployment until I find a new job. 
Um, I have paid insurance. I have paid vacation. I have a work contract and I'm a nanny. There's a lot more. I Maybe I'll make another My Bernie story that's not so focused on the Medicare for All aspect. But one thing's certain, he's the only candidate for me. I love you, Bernie Sanders, for what you're doing and for continuing to fight and staying consistent and having convictions that you haven't outgrown. Thank you.